and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and I'm here today to discuss with our guest about breath, breathing, sports, and a whole slew of other things that go along with that topic. I'm delighted to invite and have today on the show Jono Blodgett. Uh, he's a hybrid athlete. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, he's the founder of Malcolm Akai Fitness. He's a performance and breath coach. He does ice baths, sauna uh, therapy, and he just, oh, and he's a Spartan champion. So I'm super happy, and I would love to invite Jono to the show. Jono. Thank you so much for having me, Leticia. Yeah, it's a pleasure talking with you. I'm excited. I am too. Um, first off, you know, let's just, I would love to know what your definition of a hybrid athlete is. So, I mean, it's kind of been a, a popular concept that's come up recently. A lot of people are saying like, oh, I'm a, I'm a runner or I do CrossFit or um, they kind of just narrow themselves down to one sport. And growing up in Hawaii, I was always up in the mountains, I was in the ocean. So I was doing just a variety of sports. And so uh, nowadays they're starting to combine a lot of these sports. So, I mean, even CrossFit and things, they're doing some some running, some endurance sports, some uh, lifting, weightlifting, but then they're also adding swimming. So it's, it's these uh, athletes nowadays do have to be very multidisciplinary. And so that's where this hybrid athlete came along where it's, uh, doing a lot of endurance plus strength plus you know land water all kinds of different things so I just kind of love it all and so it's uh, I like being in the mountains I like being in the ocean and so I, I try to do a little bit of everything and that pretty much is the definition of the Spartan um, competitions isn't it just being able to be well-rounded with everything it, exactly yeah I mean there, you do need to be able to have the endurance because it's a lot of trail running up and down mountains, but then you're also carrying heavy sandbags and, you know, pulling yourself up over walls and rope climbs. And so you do have to have the strength side as well. And where in comparison to say like an, an Ironman athlete, they don't really need the, the strength side quite so much just because they're all endurance, just you know, kind of going as far as, as fast as they can, just um, running, swimming, biking. But yeah, the Spartan definitely requires a lot of strength component as well. So that's why I, I kind of like to just to make you much more well-rounded kind of functional athlete. So, and you're a three-time world champ. Can you, um, I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. I know we have some Spartan competitions here, but that, is that, how does that compare to like the world championship uh, arena? Uh, I mean, yeah, think, of, think about the Olympics uh, where there's just competitors from all over the world. Spartan has become a very world sport now. So, I mean, the, the last one I was in was in Greece. And so there was, you know, competitors from Australia, from all over Europe, Spain, you know, Poland. I, I was racing against guys from Swiss, Switzerland, Germany. And then there's a bunch of U.S. competitors as well. So it's just, you know, the, the Spartan race here is much more localized. You know, there'll be mainly people from Hawaii and then uh, some people from the mainland, maybe some from Australia and Japan. But on the on that world championship level it's just competitors from all over the world all different calibers and so it's just it, it steps it up it makes it a lot more pressure a lot more stress but it makes it so much fun just because they have a full you know parade of nations at the beginning uh just like they do at the olympics so it's, yeah it's an amazing event that's sweet well thank yeah. you for representing hawaii well with your three times yeah. Championships. Congratulations on that. I celebrate you. Thank you. Um, so the main part of this show that I wanted to bring up, uh, and I'm sure that you do a lot of this in your uh in your fitness business with Malcolm Mackay Fitness, is breath. I mean, how important is breath to um, being an endurance athlete and then also being able to do strength and being able to 
do these competitions? Like, where does that play a part? That's a great question. Um, I've been doing Spartan training for you know, almost 10 years now. And when I've started to get a little bit more competitive and, and when I started to kind of ramp up a little bit and take it much more seriously, you know, the first step was, okay, okay, let's focus on the training side and how can I get stronger? How can I get faster? And then it was more like the nutrition side. Okay, let me let me play around with my nutrition. How can I dial that in a little bit better? And and then I ended up going to one of the world championships in Lake Tahoe the first year. And Lake Tahoe is at you know, 7,000 feet elevation. And I went out there trying to, you know, thinking I could just run the same way I could here at sea level. And I got a, a quick realization that, you know, that high altitude definitely plays a big impact on it. And so that's really when I started to kind of dive into the breathing side, like how can your breathing affect you during your performance? And, um, you know, it's, I, when we breathe in, that's how we make ATP. That's how we make energy that fuels our muscles, that keeps our body going. And so I was learning just kind of all these different different uh, kind of protocols and, and practices you could do to make sure that you're breathing most efficiently, you're getting in the most air as much as possible during during the event and leading up to the event. There's kind of lots of different breathing practices you could do to help yourself at that high altitude. Uh, so, I mean, I can't. Here in Hawaii, we're at sea level. I can't necessarily go and, and just live at high altitude or train at high altitude to get those red blood cells, so how a lot of people would be in Colorado or Utah. But there are some breathing practices you can do to at least help yourself tolerate that that higher altitude a lot better. So, uh, yeah, basically just kind of took a deep dive into it and, and noticed that, yeah, that was the real the real turning point on when I was able to really kind of boost my my performance a lot better once I dialed in the breathing the breathing practices so on a physical level there's actually there's science behind what actually is created through proper or efficient breathing right so is yeah this way, most definitely. Does, it, does it tie in like going underwater because I've seen your videos and I see you going underwater with rocks and you train people how to do that, you know, in a safe environment and yeah. um, just in a pool, but also in the ocean. And like, how is that comparable to say the altitude? So the way that that is, is you're, you're simulating a uh, higher carbon dioxide buildup. Right. And so your body is under stress by, by creating that higher carbon dioxide when you're holding your breath. As you know, you're like your carbon dioxide increases. And so it's creating that, that stressful environment. And kind of the same thing is if you can increase your tolerance to that CO2 so that your body can withstand the stress that's taking place, um, you know, when we're doing it underwater. But it's also when you're running at altitude, when you're you're exposing your body to a lot higher levels of carbon dioxide. And so by practicing and training in underwater, and you can also do it on land by doing, you know, smaller breath holds while you're running to kind of simulate that. Um, but it'll then carry over to when you're at altitude and your carbon dioxide is, is a lot higher and, and you'll, your body will be able to keep performing even though it's, it's under that, sh that higher stress. Uh, is that is that kind of like if you feel like you're hyperventilating or something like that when you're running and you're like breathing super fast and yeah exactly i mean so it's it's your 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 as you're as you're exercising and running your body is creating through metabolism you're creating carbon dioxide and so a lot of times if people aren't they, they don't have a high tolerance to carbon dioxide. That's when their their mind, they're getting those signals like, okay, I got to slow down. I got to stop, right? I got to, otherwise, it's just, this is just too uncomfortable. But if you practice um, with that higher carbon dioxide levels, you, your body adapts 
and you you don't get those kind of warning signals going on in your head that like okay i have to slow down i have to stop you're able to continue to keep going even even though you're you're getting that higher carbon dioxide so it's pretty cool just how like on the scientific level the physiological level what's happening in your body once you can kind of understand that then you can play around with it and and adapt how you're breathing to help bring your heart rate down a little bit quicker so that you can continue to to perform at your best. So that leads me to something else that you do. Like you do the cold plunge therapy and the sauna therapy, the heat therapy. And when you do that, I know that breath plays a huge part in that oh, process. Yeah. And you mentioned the mind, right, with the breath. Yeah. And how can you speak a little bit to that and how like what kind of breath do you do fast breath, slow breath? Do you just yeah, I I don't even So I mean the I originally got into the hot cold therapy for recovery wise after mm-hmm. you know training for so long, like you start to speed down your body and break down. So I started getting into doing the ice baths. I was like, okay, I mean People have been doing this, NFL, NBA, they've been doing this for, for years as far as muscle recovery. And after doing it for a little bit, a little while longer, I, I started noticing that it was a lot more beneficial for the cognitive, for the mind side as well. It's, it's helping you to create a little bit more mental toughness because, I mean, if you've ever done an ice bath, you know it's not the most comfortable <laughs> place to be in. So it's it's teaching yourself to, to you know, even though you're in a, a uncomfortable environment, you know, you, you can control the mind, calm the mind, and then it does come back down to the breath, right? So when you're, when people first get into an ice bath, it causes that hyperventilation and takes your breath away, <laughs> right? So after that, it's teaching people and, and teaching yourself, like, okay, you know, this is a stressful place I'm in right now, but, but yeah, let me calm the mind, calm the breath, extend that exhale and bring myself back into that parasympathetic state. And then, you know, once you kind of control your breathing, then you're able to focus a little bit more on, on what's actually happening around you and, and make better decisions where a lot of people, when they first start to get that, that hyperventilation, right, if they don't control their breathing, then that it might send them into a panic state. And so it's, it's just learning, you know, like, okay, I can, I'm, I'm the control. I can control my mind. I can control my body. And so what are the steps that I need to do to, to get that going? And it all comes back down to the breathing, you know, staying in that present state, not letting your mind wander and, you know, go into a, a fearful place and, you know, then, it's harder to control yourself after that. Right, because it just sort of snowballs, doesn't it? Which is oh, why yeah. it's so good to have a coach, to have yeah. somebody, yeah, yeah. especially when you're first starting out. I mean, maybe you don't need them forever. You can exactly. start yeah. slow, right? Yep, yep, 100%. But it's just a lot of times it's, it's learning how to, what sorts of breathing practices you can do to help incorporate that that calm state of mind where. You know, if someone just goes dives right in, they may not know how to what to do, and so yeah, having that coach just at least being able to walk them through it the first few times, and then once they kind of understand what's happening physiologically and in their mind, then they have a better understanding and they can kind of take charge from there, and and then it carries over into other aspects of life, right? If you're going into a stressful meeting or, you know, just having a, a stressful conversation with somebody, you know, it's a lot of these same breathing practices that, that you're doing in the ice bath that you could do before a big meeting to help, help you perform better, help you calm yourself so that your mind is a little bit more clear and, and able to focus on and what you want to do. So I'm so happy that you brought that up because It is not just this high performance physically that we can use breath for. It's a high performance, you know, mentally and spiritually and emotionally. So that anxiety and that fear, 
that just can be so gripping. Like it can just, it can overtake you. I know that there's been times when I've gone on hikes and I'm not an extreme hiker, but just doing the rim of Cohelepelepe is like, okay, there were points where I was really, really scared. I mean, I was listening to Deva Pramal and I'm like, okay, I got to turn her up and yeah. just yeah. And I just was like, okay. And then I was doing a bit of a mantra while I was while I was doing it. But you know, if I didn't have that practice, I think I I may have been paralyzed. Like I wouldn't have been able to move. I don't think. Oh yeah. I mean, that's a lot of people when they get into those situations, they'll they'll do exactly like you said. They'll it's that that freeze or flight, right? And a lot of people will end up freezing and then not knowing how to. You know, their their brain is going into all kinds of different scenarios. And so then they're unable to actually kind of just think clearly and be, okay, like, what do I need to do to get myself out of this situation? You know, and think much more calmly and, and it, it can snowball. Exactly. And then it turn into a, a worse situation, potentially. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've even been on a very it was a large rock really really big rock but it's yeah. at the top of this mountain you know and yeah, i yeah. could try to do tree pose with just my foot on my ankle and i'm like sweating and and nervous yeah. and shaking and then i go on top of my mom's fence which is maybe two feet by one foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can do full tree pose, you know, with no problem at all, because I know if I fall, I'm just going to maybe break something or bruise myself. But so your brain has that power. But if I would have been able to harness my breath, what kind of breath would you use in that situation? So in that situation, I mean, it's a lot of it, if you're you're feeling stressed, you're doing a lot of shallow chest breathing, right? Is what uh, the poor breathing mechanics that a lot of people are just going through life living nowadays, unfortunately. But when you're in that, st that stressful state, it exacerbates it even more. And so it's just that shallow, like rapid breathing. And so you're not, you're not actually getting uh, the oxygen that you need because you're breathing so quickly. Right, that your carbon dioxide never actually has a chance to to build up, and so that's where the science side comes in. Is when we build that carbon dioxide level up, that's what signals the body to release the oxygen into our muscles, into our into our brain, into our system to help us to help us think a lot more clearly. So people just <laughs> you're actually dropping your CO two levels down even more. So a lot of it is just slowing the breath down really breathing down in deeper into the belly expanding the rib cage laterally and just extending the exhale Oops. right and just extending that exhale slowing it down coming back down into a parasympathetic state and i'll often have people do small breath holds in order to bring that carbon dioxide level back up so imagine going you know, a lot of times with say uh people's having an asthma attack or a panic attack the old the old ways to do it people would say like okay breathe into a bag right breathe into a brown paper bag and all that is is you're you're just rebreathing your own air you're rebreathing your own carbon dioxide so that's increasing your carbon dioxide and is helping you to to calm yourself down so a lot of it's that same thing just when people are having that that anxiety or the panic attack just slowing the breath down extending the exhale and doing a small breath hold will help really help to to bring the the mind back to a, a state where you can think more clearly so that's something that you could practice even before say you have a really uncomfortable conversation that you have to have with somebody and you're feeling really emotional you can just take like 10 deep breaths and just feel your ex count your exhale is that how you would do it? Count your inhale yeah. and your exhale? Yep. Yep. So I, I might do just, uh, you know, <clears throat> try to keep everything nasal as much as possible. Just a nice three second inhale, a six second exhale. Do that for five or six breaths. And then maybe on the, the last breath, do a, a small, maybe just 10, 15 second uh, uh, breath hold. 
and then kind of return to normal breathing after that. And, and you'll feel much more calm and relaxed and in a better place. That's a really simple tip that just yeah. anybody can do, right? It's not yeah. super complicated. You don't have to be an expert. Anybody exactly. listening could be able to do that and just say, okay, I'm going to do five breaths in three, out six, and just hold for 10 seconds on the sixth breath. On the exactly. Exhale. Yep. 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 And then, yeah. and yeah. And like you said, breathing into your hips, right? Like breathing all the way deep. All the way deep. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just about breathing down into the belly. I mean, our diaphragm sits below our rib cage, right? So it's breathing down into the belly, but then you can also really expand the rib cage outwards, right? So your, your lungs are, are like a cylinder. So when we're just shallow chest breathing, you're really only feeling that top half of your lungs. So by really getting that deep breath, expanding the rib cage laterally, you're going to be able to fill that, that entire lung capacity all the way down where all that blood exchange is occurring and the oxygen exchange is taking place. And so you're just getting, it comes back down to the more efficient breathing, right? So you're, every breath you're taking in, you're actually absorbing more of that air. So your body's just making, it's more efficient at using the air you breathe in. I have a question. Have you ever gotten into a situation, because I know you do a lot of um, water things, you do mountain stuff. Have you ever gotten into a situation where you were literally, legitimately scared? And would you be open to like sharing one of those, if there's more than one, um, experiences and how you basically used breath and talked yourself out of it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, offhand, the, the one situation I can think of was um, I was hiking up uh, uh, the backside of Crouchy Line, where you can keep on going up further to this spot called Pu'u Mana Mana. And I had kind of gotten off trail and I was going a little further back along the ridge and I was I was by myself which I know shouldn't be done on hiking but it was during uh during COVID time and I, I needed to kind of get out and you know and so I just decided to go off on, by myself and I was on a very narrow ridge and got myself into a predicament where it was some very loose loose rocks and gravels and things and so I mean my mind started going into different scenarios if i fall like no one's gonna know i'm back here they won't be able to find me and things and so i basically just you know stopped on at where i was and and took those breaths and and just thought about like okay what do i need to do to to get myself safely out of here you know calm myself I, you know if i was shaking a little bit and just took the time i didn't rush and was able to eventually make myself get into a, a safer situation but it's definitely, you know, if someone was in that and didn't know what to do and they may have been shaking a little bit and, you know, misstepped and then that could have led to, you know, disaster, death or anything. But um, so it's it's learning how to deal with those uncomfortable situations and still be able to keep the mind focused and clear. Right. And I, I, I heard you say don't rush. And isn't that just... Mm. Like that's so essential. That's essential to not just in a critical situation like that, but that's essential in our daily life. I mean, exactly. I know yeah. that anytime I rush, I either hurt myself or I hurt somebody else or I damage something usually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so in this, it, time, it's just learning to, yeah, to stop and take a step back, take a breath. You know, look, observe about, you know, what's going on around you. Some people, they get so focused in on, on a situation that they're not observing what's going on around you. I give the example of, you know, the if someone's up on a ridge and they're scared of snakes and they see a snake, it's just sitting on the path, you know, five, six feet in front of them. They're so focused on that snake that they take a step back and then they fall off the cliff. And so what was the actual, like, you know, the, the cliff was the, the thing that ended up hurting them. It wasn't the snake didn't even do anything, but some people get so laser focused on things that they don't look at, at what the, what else is going on around them. And so, you know, it's just, it's just stopping, 
you know, observing and, and taking that extra moment just to take it all in. Right. I even have a, a dear teacher of mine who teaches that once we breathe and really allow ourselves to surrender into that deep breathing and our deep breaths, that it can actually slow down time. So you actually have mm. more time rather yeah. than feeling like you have to rush through something. Yep. Right. Do you, I mean, it I makes agree. so yeah. much. Yeah, hundred percent. Makes yeah, so much I sense to agree. me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So, um, talk to me a little bit about the ice sauna therapy retreats that you're doing, and how you coach people with Malcolm Akai Fitness. Uh, yeah, do a lot of different things, workshops where we do um, some breathing practices and then we practice uh, some of the underwater breath holds in the pool. And then we'll always finish with an ice bath just so you can kind of incorporate those breathing practices you just learned and then get yourself into that stressful environment and practice them in order to calm the system back down and, and get through it. And an ice bath always invigorates you and makes you feel amazing after. So it, it's, it's kicking up all kinds of epinephrine and dopamine and all the all the feel-good hormones so it's a uh, a fantastic way to spend the day and, and enjoy and learn about yourself and learn about your body and what you can handle yeah and that's really just like how not just invigorating but it's very um liberating right yeah you feel oh, so yeah. liberated after doing something like that that you really might be anxious or fearful or just not even like doubtful even just some self-doubt thrown in there it's oh like, yeah yeah after you yeah i mean the, the self-doubt is there's people have a lot of a lot of fear over over cold and so when you can get over that self-doubt i mean you feel accomplished and like okay let's go try something else like difficult that maybe i can do so it really helps to build that self-esteem as well yeah even if that goes from like an ice bath to being able to say approach your boss with something that you wanted to talk to them about or or your teenager or or you know a oh, yeah. Or a loved one because yep. it all just bubbles over onto each other doesn't it oh yeah definitely i mean it, if you can get yourself through one difficult situation then it'll it carries over I'm like, okay well you know i tell you yeah start off with a cold shower start off with an ice bath and first thing in the morning i promise you like okay if you got through that you can get through any other difficult situation <laughs> throughout the day so that's no problem yeah uh... So how can our viewers find you, Jono? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram, just Jono Blodgett. And um, I've, I've got uh, Facebook as well. And then my website is Malcolm Mackay Fitness, uh, where I have a master class where anyone can go on and just it's a kind of go at your own pace, breath, strength, mind master class where I go through all breathing mechanics and how to use the breath. And then also I cover you know, how you can use that in overcoming fear and anxiety and then build in mental strength and kind of more grit in your life and how all the, how the breath is incorporated into all that. So. I love it. And that's the, you don't even have to do that in person. So you don't have to be in Hawaii on Oahu. You could be doing that from Ohio and you don't even have an ocean, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yep. Yep. It's all kind of all online, um, self-paced. So you can kind of go through the lessons and it has some other expl explanation text below it where, you know, I, I give a few other examples and stories and, and things like that. So it's a, yeah, a great, a great way to introduce yourself to the different breathing. And, um, I give some breathing protocols as well, as far as, you know, this is what you could do if you're, a pre-workout or this is what you can do like if you're having a hard time going to sleep and um staying asleep or for that stress anxiety having a panic attack so lots of different inf good information in there oh my gosh that's great i absolutely love that i have so many clients who are like i just can't sleep at night and yeah. um, i would be i'm so happy to be able to have a place to direct them to go yeah yeah <laughs> thank yeah, you so it's amazing much. how the the breathing affects your sleep as well. So it's pretty wild. Yeah.
there's that's a whole nother episode actually <laughs> oh yeah exactly exactly <laughs> oh my gosh well thank you so much for taking the time out i can see that yeah, thank you you're on the move you've got you know some people milling about behind you thank you for taking the time at uh beautiful thank you i appreciate it <laughs> thank you and thank you to think tech hawaii thanks for providing this platform for us to be able to talk about all of these subjects and topics that can help us further our body our spirit our emotions and our minds with that until i see you next aloha Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.